Welcome to the Lippus Report. Hi everyone, it's Nick Lippis, and I'm really excited. We have Alcatel Lucent here today talking about the OmniSwitch 10K, which is the first time one it's been tested uh, in the in a public test in the industry, and also it is a very large, dense product. Um, for the 10 gigabit Ethernet data center marketplace. And so uh, I have Karan Kwaja, correct? Yes. Um, joining me today uh, from Alcatel Lucent, and we're going to talk about design and how uh, the Alcatel Lucent Omni Switch uh, now is uh, architected uh, into data centers, especially as we move into a highly virtualized environment and as companies start to consider converged I.O., or in other words, kind of storage enablement. So, Karan, why don't we start off with? The overall approach towards how OmniSwitch uh, or how Alcatel Lucent kind of approach the OmniSwitch 10,000. So OmniSwitch 10,000 is a part of our overall strategy, which is called Application Point Networks. So OmniSwitch 10K, 10K is the first of the next generation of our products, which have been released. And um, the key thing which we focus on this particular product are in three drillers. One is architecture. The second one is control. The third one is streamlined operations. When we talk about architecture. So with OmniSwitch 10K, we can support 5.12 terabits of switching capacity with 256 10 gig wide speed ports with fully featured layer 2, layer 3 functionality, plus some of the new emerging features which are coming out, uh, like um, MC Lag is currently supported in the first release, mm -hmm. and we're moving towards a virtualized chassis and as well as lossless, but it is lossless fabric ready, ready, together with support of 40 gig and 100 gig in the future. Yeah. So, and with the first release, and another exciting thing is that it will be supporting the virtual machine uh, uh, movement and the motion and other things, other features which are required for virtualization in a data center environment. Now, the second thing which is, I think, which is very critical for the enterprises to focus on is the control mechanism. That how do you control and how much control do you have within your product for providing a uh, high quality bandwidth product, high quality bandwidth network. So when I, call, when I say high quality bandwidth, I'm not talking about just raw speeds and feeds. Raw speeds and feeds are enough. That was the thing of the past. Now we have to provide quality where the consumer or where the, the networking uh, administrators mm -hmm. have control over what they want to prioritize, how they want to prioritize, and what kind of priority they want to do it based on applications. Because again, you can have an infrastructure, but if you can't prioritize your applications, it's useless. Yeah. Now you're looking at basic level of QoS. So we brought in the carrier class QoS queuing mechanism with 16K queues, which provide fine granular control to the administrators to, to, to separate and prioritize the applications based on the marketing needs, and based on their business requirements. Yeah. Now the third thing, which within all of this thing, we cannot uh, ignore the streamlined operations. Streamlined operation for continuing operation of the, uh, the your network is very critical. You want as much automation as possible. You want an uh, eco-sustainable product. An eco-sustainable 1.5 watts per gigabit per second is basically outweighs there are major competition by a factor of four. Yeah. So, so what are you thinking, because we're going to measure this, Like, so yes. what are you thinking in terms of like power consumption per port? Uh, it's about, it's 1.5 gigabits per, uh, it's about 15 watts per port at okay. a 10 gig wide speed. Okay, great. We'll check that out. So yeah. um, I, I have to like, uh, I, I want to sure. kind of guide you a, a little bit. So I know we, we, there is architecture, I know there's control, and there's also streamlined operations. Yes. Let's talk about architecture. So on the yes. architecture side of it, um, has uh, Apatel Lucent have an approach towards um, uh, a one, two, three tier kind of architecture? Is it, uh, are you, um, as we move into virtualized infrastructure, are you thinking around uh, kind of layer two flat kind of architectures, or are you looking at other kinds of maybe mechanisms in which you become more virtualization aware, so you can kind of do configuration changes automated as you move VMs from service to service? So very good question. The, uh, the first thing is with the density which we have on the Switch 10K, we don't believe that a three-tier architecture is scalable anymore. We can collapse those three-tier architectures into two tiers okay. with 256 10 gate ports. And then the secondly, based on your uh, question, uh, when it comes to the virtualization of the network elements themselves, we have MC Lag, which is the first step in the uh, virtualization. We are going to be supporting virtual chassis in the future, mm -hmm. which is on the on a roadmap. It will be coming out sometime in 2011. So that will provide you a complete virtual core element. 
in your uh, data center in Pakistan. Okay, but as we have VMs moving from physical to server to physical so, server, so uh, how are you? So I'm going to address on that. So okay. the the Alcatel Lucent takes pride that we have been uh, able to provide features like growth mobility, user network profile in the past, which has uh, automated the operations for the network administrators. Yeah. And we have continued that approach and tried and tried to continue to uh, to enhance it. And this particular uh, uh, mobility of the virtual machines will be enhanced with the VM integration together with us, so that okay. when a virtual machine moves yeah. from one uh, physical server to another physical server, we can detect it, configure the network, propagate it through MBRP throughout the rest of the elements of the network. Very good, excellent. So there's a kind of a virtualization awareness mechanism yes. uh, to do auto configuration within the Omni switch uh, fabric. So yes. two tier, uh, two tier architecture, layer two, uh, layer three, a um, lot of um, kind of virtualization uh, options, uh, converged IO. So uh, what's the strategy there? So. Uh, we uh, we have looked into uh, all of the trends, and one of the things which we uh, felt very strongly about that whatever platforms we come out with, we have to be ready for the convert IO. So uh, again, OmniSwitch 10K is ready with the lossless fabric. Mm -hmm. uh, but one thing which we have to always keep in our uh, focus is that there may be a lot of hype as to reality. So when it's, this will be adapted by the the data centers as a mass. Uh, uh, mass feature is something which is yet to be seen. We can go back to the voice over IP days. Voice over IP started well in 2000, but now we are seeing a massive adaptability and massive requirement for that by the consumer. So it is our belief that even though it is required and we will be continuing to pro, uh, enhance our products with support of the DCB, uh, DCBX, BFC, ATS, QC, and kind of features next year, no. but the reality is the market may be a little bit slow to respond. Right answer. Okay, mm -hmm. very good, excellent. Okay. Um, and you mentioned about kind of optimization um, of operations. Yes. So let's um, very quickly. So what do you mean by that? So um, um, when when we talk about the optimization of the operations, there are multiple different things which come into play. I'll touch on a couple of them. The first one is there is a lot of focus on eco sustainability. Mm -hmm. So power consumption is a huge stress for everyone. We want to uh, reduce the carbon footprint. Alcatel Lucent, as a, as a global company, have a focus on reducing the carbon footprint. We have got our own targets and we are moving towards that. So this is again a step we have outweighed the competition by uh, by reducing the power consumption on a 10 gig wise pool, uh, which, is, which is a very good step in that direction. So that's number one. Now number two uh, is basically a key point is that you have to be able to automate, you have to be able to reduce the burden on the network administrators in a lot of ways so that the switches are self uh, device aware and self aware and they can auto configure. So we have um, already released some of the features for this product and we are going to continue to enhance in that direction to reduce the burden from the network administrators and make the network more intelligent and less burden from um, static configuration days mm -hmm. to a more dynamic configuration days with reporting and track tra trackability and traceability uh, with our um, management platform. Okay, great. Um, so three key investment areas around architecture control and optimization. Um, let's go take a look at the 10,000 as it's getting ready to be th put through its spaces um, in the ISOM City Lab. Thank right. you very much, Nick. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, it's Nick with us again. And I'm here with Ron Kaja from Alcatel Lucid, and we're standing right next to the OmniSwitch 10,000. Um, it's brand new product for them. First time it's been tested into a public test uh, in its beginning of its life cycle. It's a poor switch also, as you can tell, very high density. Also, it represents, as a lot of these poor switches represent, the state of the art of engineering, and both electrical engineering as well as software computer engineering for the marketplace to be able to really produce huge amount of packet distribution with very low latency and low power consumption. So without any further ado, um, sorry, want you want to give us a little quick tour on the product? Oh, sure. Thank you, Nick. So this is our latest integrated OmniSwitch 10K. You can see that it is uh, highly redundant, populated right now with 32 10 gig ports. We support 256 wide We have got two management modules called CNN. We have got two fabric, fabric design on all of these four modules to provide redundant fabric. We have got two fan trays to provide fan trays redundancy. We have got power supplies at the bottom of the tray to provide power redundancy. It is designed for front to back loading, ideal for DC environment. Now, the three things which differentiate our product from the rest of the competition are switching capacity, port density, power consumption. Our switching 
capacities at 5.1 to terabits per second outweighs our competition by a factor of 4. Our uh, load density 256 outweighs our competition again by a factor of 4. And with 1.5 watts per gigabit per second power consumption, we are pretty much the lowest, greenest cost in the market or uh, platform in the market. Now, there is other things you have to remember that we brought in from our carrier class experience. The, the quality of service with the virtual train supporting 15K uh, queues which allows high quality delivery of the real-time application. With 40 gigs, 100 gigs and lossless private readiness make a future proof with the support of the upcoming standards. This particular product is targeted from Asian to large enterprises in various cities, including servers, IP, Ethernet uh, applications, mission critical networks and data network systems. Data Excellent. Well, thank you, everyone. And uh, plug in and tune in for the report and the results. That concludes this edition of the Lippus Report. Thank you for joining us. Look for us every Tuesday and Thursday. To get your free subscription to the Lippus Report newsletter, go to www.lippus.com.